hydroplane. History was made yesterday in San Diego as the Budweiser team set a new world record with a lap speed over 173 miles an hour. I knew the boat was running really good and the water was really good, so I knew that there was a chance right there to go after a record. Hey. <laughs> Bernie Little and the Budweiser crew could celebrate, but they'd have to keep their game faces on. World record in hand, Bill Walk again chased by Chip Hanauer back after a two-race layoff due to injury. It's billed as a clash of titans, and it's next. Thanks as always for tuning in. We have got a lot of racing to bring you from Mission Bay here in San Diego. But first, a few weeks earlier in the hydroplane racing season, the drivers went up north of the border to Kelowna, British Columbia. My partner Steve Montgomery was there, and he files this report. Well, the big story here this weekend has been the wind. You wouldn't know it right now, but it was very, very high on Saturday and Sunday. It shortened qualifying and threatened to cancel the racing altogether. We did finally get in a couple of preliminary heats and the winner-take-all final. Chip Hanauer made big news on Saturday by going home to Seattle after deciding his injured back would not allow him to race this weekend in the Miss Pico. Once again, Greg Hopp called upon to substitute for Hanauer. Then, on Sunday morning before racing, very bad news for Mark Weber and the York International. In a pre-race testing session, they lost one blade of their three-bladed prop. The tremendous vibration did a lot of damage to the boat, the transom actually separating from the rest of the hull. Their day was over. A lot of speculation during the wind delay as to what strategy the Budweiser team would employ, knowing that if they won here in Kelowna, they'd be in lane four in San Diego, an event that's very important to that team. What would they do? Well, we found out very early. The field thundered into the first turn. The Pico came out first. The Budweiser went by him and never looked back. Hey, Dave. <laughs> David, you must have decided lane four in San Diego wouldn't be so bad after all. I don't have to, I don't know how to lose. And I, we're, we're, we had an awful lot of fans up here. I mean, I think we sold out the T-shirt trailer. And everybody came up and said, Dave, I know you can do it no matter where they put you. So I guess we're going to find out if we can do it from lane four. I've won San Diego twice from lane four before so get ready Hanauer get in that thing we're coming after you Dave Vilwalk starting in lane four all weekend in San Diego is just one of the many stories we'll be following here in Mission Bay Steve Montgomery he has the drivers championship in hand already with two races to go in the season still chasing the national championship though as we speak Vilwalk and the bud team are somewhere around 300 points short of clinching Bernie Little's 19th National High Point Championship. It should happen sometime in our show today. But it won't be very easy for Vilwalk. That's because a healthy Chip Hanauer is back in racing. Chip Hanauer is back in the Miss Pico. Ran a lap in qualifying Saturday morning at over 166 miles per hour. Very impressive. And with his rival, his old friend Dave Vilwalk, way out in lane four, it could open the door for Chip Hanauer to tie the legendary Bill Muncy in all-time career victories. Speaking of Chip, he was one of the feature boats in here. 1A, and he got off to a very good start. Hanauer and the Blue Miss Pico in lane two. That's Mark Evans and the Elam Plus off to his left, and they would be the two major players in this heat. Also competing in this heat, Mark Evans' brother Mitch, Greg Hopp, Jimmy King, and the good Dr. Ken Muscatel. And there's a look at Jimmy King marking his return to hydroplane racing, driving the Lumar window film boat. Another driver change here in the 1999 season. The field thunders into the first turn. Out comes the Pico and Chip Hanauer and never looked back. And Steve, he told us both before the races this weekend that he felt as good as he has all season long coming back from that two event layoff. Chip's condition has been a question mark ever since the crash in the Tri-Cities. Now he appears to be ready to race. That's good news for Pico fans. Pico out in front, and if he looks off to his right, to your left on the TV screen, that's the Appian Geronimo piloted by Mitch Evans. Haven't seen him ride too well all season long, but the Appian looked good in Heat 1A. Qualified nearly 14 miles an hour slower than at this race last year. In the background, the white boat to the left is N. Mark Evans and the Miss Elam Plus. They would finish second to your winner in Heat 1A, Chip Hanauer in the Miss Pico. Chip, it's been a while since you raced on Mission Bay in San Diego. Bring back some memories? Yeah, this is a great place to race. It's um, beautiful. It's great for the fans. They're real close, and the water was good, but uh, the water can be nasty here. You qualified well, 166 plus. How's the boat ride? Um, the boat ride's okay. We had an engine problem that time, and I kept losing power with each lap, so... We're going to have to do a little better than that because uh, Dave can run us down for sure. Heat 1B featuring Miss Budweiser and Dave Vilwalk. This is the first time Dave and the Miss Bud 
had a chance to get on the water in race conditions and see what it's going to be like all weekend long on Mission Bay, racing from lane four, which, as we mentioned earlier in the show, that's where he's going to be for every heat this weekend. It's also a chance for drivers like Mark Weber in the York International and Mark Tate in the Freddy's Club boat to possibly score some extra points from an inside lane, something that they might not have a chance to do in normal race conditions against the Miss Bud. Miss Budweiser out in lane four. How would he fare out there? Some very quick boats off to his left, like the yellow York International, driven by Mark Weber, and Mark Tate in the black Freddy's Club, also making a good start. As tough as the Miss Budweiser is to contend with in virtually every event this season, Steve, it bears mentioning that in qualifying, not only did Mark Weber qualify at a very high speed, but Mark Tate and the Freddy's Club also qualified well. We should see some very fast boats on the water. A big issue throughout the weekend would be the fact that the Budweiser coming from lane four only needed a five-boat overlap legally to move in a lane. Now that meant that's less than a rooster tail, obviously, so you're going to get whacked pretty good if he moves over. That became a very big story here this weekend. And especially when you consider this is saltwater, the second saltwater event that we've had this season, with the third coming up in Hawaii, you get washed down in saltwater, it's doubly as bad as it would on freshwater. Mark Tate and the Freddy's Club coming by Mike Hansen in the Supply Depot, which did not finish in Heat 1B. And both the York and the Freddy's Club moving outside the Budweiser so they wouldn't get into that problem with the salt water. It's a smart move. Dave Villwatt, the winner. Mark Weber finished in second. Well, we wondered how you'd like the outside. You never did come over into lane one, did you? <laughs> no. Well, you know, it's, guys, it's a tough race here. There's a lot of salt in the air and things like that. And, you know, we want to make sure everybody gets through the day okay, so... You know, that was a good heat to do that. The boat handles very well out there. Of course, it handles well everywhere, but you've told us you won before here in lane four. You like it out there. Yeah, it's a nice place. You don't have to push and shove with any of your friends. You just get out there, mind your own business, try to step on the gas and get out front somehow. <laughs> so we'll just keep trying doing that. I, I don't know. We'll see how it, it's going to get tougher. A clean-shaven Dave Villwalk for the races in San Diego.